This is an exam question. First thing to notice is they're guiding us through. They're actually encouraging us to form the difference of two squares and we'll then use that to rationalise the denominator in part b. So firstly, difference of two squares here, 16, take away 3. So it should be 13. Now we'll just check that that works. There's the 16. Now we end up with minus 4 root 3 here, plus 4 root 3. So that cancels. Minus 4 root 3, plus 4 root 3, cancels. I end up with root 3 times root 3, which well is actually root 3 times minus root 3, which is minus 3. So the answer is 13. Now this is good because it means we've done half the work for part B already. They're guiding us through, remember. To express this in this form, they're really asking us to rationalise the denominator. Now, notice that a and b are both integers. They're both whole numbers here, so we shouldn't end up with fractions. We should end up with, with nothing on the bottom. It shouldn't be a fraction. So that will help as a check when we work this out. Now, the 26 hasn't been chosen by coincidence. It's actually been carefully worked out so that the fractions will cancel. So to rationalise the denominator here, what we do is multiply the top and the bottom by 4 minus root 3. Reason? because then we form the difference of two squares on the denominator and that will get rid of the square roots. That will rationalise the denominator. Now we've already worked out what 4 plus root 3 times 4 minus root 3 is. It's 13. And the top becomes 26 times 4, which is 104. 26 times minus root 3, which is minus 26 root 3. Now, it might be tempting to leave the answer like this, but of course we've got to leave it in this form, where a and b are whole numbers. So, we need to split this up. 104 divided by 13. Well, we've just worked out that 4 26s are 104, so 8 13s are 104. So 104 divided by 13 is 8. And 26 divided by 13 is 2, so it's 8. Subtract 2 root 3. In other words, a is 8 b is minus 2. Don't be put off by getting a negative here. Um, this, can be, this can be just as well be a negative number as a positive number just because it says plus b, b could be minus 2. Here's another exam question. Pause, have a go at it yourself and then come back when you're ready. Okay, part a is rather like the first part of what we were talking about a moment ago, so it's a bit like what we did here. So what we've got to do is remember to find the largest square factor that will make the third simplified. So the largest square factor of 45. So not 15 times 3 because 15 is a not a square number and 3 is not a square number so it doesn't really help to write it as root 3 times root 15. Notice that 45 is 9 fives. They're given as a clue here by saying a root 5. So we need to use 5 as one of the factors anyway, but we should be looking for the largest square number, which is 9. So root 9 times root 5 makes root 45, and root 9 is 3. Now when it says right and only gives us one mark, we can't expect it to be too difficult, so thankfully that was quite straightforward. This is one of those questions, though, which doesn't really follow from the first part, or doesn't appear to. To express this in the form b plus c root 5 where b and c are integers, the first thing that we're going to do is rationalise the denominator, which means multiply the top and the bottom by whatever we need to, to make the difference of two squares. And in this case it's 3 plus root 5, because we've got 3 minus root 5 already in the denominator, we need to multiply top and bottom by 3 plus root 5. Now we probably get one mark for this this much so far. It's five mark question, so one mark for getting that far. Now the bottom, three minus root five times three plus root five is the difference of two squares. That's the whole point of doing it. So it's three squared, take away root five squared. Three squared is nine, so okay, root root five squared, which is five. So nine, take away five. The denominator should be four. Now, a, b and c are both integers here, so we're expecting to be able to divide by 4, rather like that last question. 
3 plus root 5 times 3 plus root 5 we now need to work out and then double. 3 threes are 9, so that gives us 18 when we double it. 3 times root 5 and 3 times root 5 is 6 times root 5. Doubled is 12 times root 5. And finally, root 5 times root 5 is 5, times that by 2 is 10. So I think we get that. And now all we need to do is simplify it. Now the number bits make 28, 28, which is 18 and 10. 28 divided by 4, which is 7. And then we've got 12 root 5 divided by 4, which is 3 root 5. So it all divided nicely to leave B and C both integers. B is 7, C is 3.